My name is Derb Morrison. I'm 38 years old. I've been tattooing so I was 17 years old, so it's been 21 years now. And uh, along those lines, I've you know come to develop the Hell City Tattoo Festival. Now I'm the uh, the owner and promoter of the Hell City Tattoo Fest here in Columbus, Ohio, as well as Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so that's you know grown really good. Recently, I've been doing uh, True Tubes, which are the steel tip disposable tubes, um, and that's taken off pretty good too. So that's kind of what my way of giving back to, to the tattoo industry, you know. I've tattooed for 21 years, had shops for almost 15 years, you know, and then I felt like it was time to give back to the tattoo industry, and that's when I started to develop the Hell City Tattoo Fest, which has taken off, and, and I've pretty much stayed focused on that, you know, for the last 10 years, pretty hardcore, and it's uh, it's been well received, you know, by the industry and the other artists, so uh, mainly just focusing on that right now, true tubes and pint size paintings. Well, let's go back to when I was 17 years old and was tattooing and pretty much, you know, I, I, I'd been doing art and I was pretty fluent with art, art classes through high school, had this big dream of going to art college, and then I started realizing the potential of tattooing. You know, when I hit 18 years old, I actually got invited straight out of high school to work in Columbus, Ohio here, and, uh, you know, pretty much just saturated myself in the art form, you know. From the time I picked up a machine till now, I've, I've tried to stay very active, very motivated, um, educated, and all that. Um, so, tattooing in the in the you know in the studio in Columbus, I saw the potential of what tattooing could do for me, and how it was a vehicle to be able to travel, to make money, to meet new interesting. I mean, some of the most interesting people I've met through tattooing. You know, some of the most genuine people, some of my best friends. So that, you know, like when you see something that has such a positive reflection, you know, on you, you, you tend to absorb in it more. You tend to get more aggressive and more, not aggressive in it, you know, and like aggressive, but you get more aggressive as far as trying to expand and, and learn and grow in the art form. So, uh, you know, after, after tattooing in Columbus, you know, being 18 years old, I moved out to California and traveled around, ended up tattooing with Sailor Moses down in Biloxi, Mississippi. And, uh, you know, that was, that was the beginning of, of of what I wanted to do for tattooing for myself, for the industry and all that. And I came back to Columbus, Ohio in, uh, in 1994 and opened up Stain Skin Tattoo Studio. And at that time, I was the fifth studio in Columbus. And, uh, you know, it was pretty new. And I was like this young kid that was tattooing a little bit differently at that time that people hadn't seen that, that style. You know, it was Marty Holcomb that was tearing it up too, you know. Uh, but I brought that kind of like that new school edge you know, back with me from traveling and learning and stuff and open up stained skin. Um, you know, I just kept growing from there, you know, like I lived in my tattoo studio for four and a half months. I came back from, from Mississippi um, to open up stained skin and I literally opened up stained skin on a thousand dollars. I had five hundred dollars that my landlord let me put down for rent and I talked her out of letting, you know, making me put down the last five hundred for the last month's rent and I put that five hundred into things that I needed to get the studio running, you know. And it would stay there, would sleep there, go shower at people's houses, you know, just, you know, really driven on, on what little I had at that time. So, um, you know, kept doing that and, uh, you know, over time started getting more and more things published in the magazines, you know, and, and, and started kind of getting my name out there. Then I started attending a lot more tattoo conventions too, and that's when I really kind of like saw the overall picture, I guess, of, of the, the industry and the community itself. Uh, by going and meeting all these people that I had seen in the magazines and just seeing their like, cool shit, you know, all the uh, everybody's fucking rad, you know. Back then you're so amazed by it. Uh, so from having a studio for so many years and having guest artists come through and hit conventions and things like that, I started to get a kind of a household name in tattooing, you know, because I was thoroughly involved. I was doing, you know, what I thought was you know progressive tattooing at the time, you know, um, and just kept pushing, you know, pushing every day essentially. Yeah, when I, you know, I mean, I got to the point where my plate was so full with with having the tattoo studios, because I had two of them by that time. I opened up one in my hometown, uh, Newark, as well. So, you know, having the two studios, and then I, for many years I had this idea of, you know, putting on Hell City. I was just trying to wait for the right venue to come back to me and, and put their trust in me to, to put on, a, you know, a good show and stuff like that. And they all had these, you know, perceptions of tattooed people that were going to fucking ruin the whole hotel and wreck the whole place. You know, and, and that was far from the case. Tattooed people are very respectful. When you're heavily tattooed, you have to earn the respect because you have people that, you know, kind of look negatively. You know, I don't like to think like that, but, 
you do have to earn respect. So all of our people, you know, the tattoo industry in general is very respectful. And Hyatt saw that, you know. So between me, you know, developing Hell City and, and owning two studios and trying to tattoo and trying to be a father, you know, and, and kind of fit all these things on my plate, there, there came a time in my, in my career that I was like, okay, I'm going to have to let go of one to focus on another, you know. And rather than closing stain skin down, you know, it was a good studio for the towns and for the industry and stuff like that. So rather than closing stain skin down, I wanted to pass the torches on to other artists that I think could carry on the name and, and keep it going. I thought it would be unfair to close stain skin, you know, just like have it be a memory where it could carry on and people just continue to get good tattoos. And at that point is when I was like, okay, you know, that, that chapter in the book is kind of done for now as far as owning studios, and my intent focus was on, on the Hell City Tattoo Fest, you know. And then taking the energy that I had from the shops and throwing it into the convention is what kind of helped it grow. Like, Stain Skin grew really, you know, really good because I was fully devoted to it. And now I'm fully devoted to the Hell City Tattoo Fest, you know. And people have seen that, you know, we, we put a little bit of a different flavor to, to the convention and try to do things from an artist standpoint that we wanted as artists over those years at other conventions that I wasn't really seeing people put their full effort into. And, you know, by me focusing on the convention, and, and focusing on the artists themselves and things that we needed, one, gain the respect of the you know, tattoo you know, artists and industry and stuff like that because we are doing things different. We're keeping things on an artistic level, you know, very well organized, focused on the art form, you know, with, with good entertainment that, to entertain the crowd. And, you know, it's, it's pretty much a big party. You know, it's an artistic party for the weekend and, you know, things have grown. So when I started doing Hell City, and people started seeing it, you know, grow and expand and really saw that it was like, put all my energy into it, you know, they, it just started to grow. More artists became involved, you know, and interested in the show. And that's one of those things, too, where to be in a convention promoter, to coming out with different products, like we came out with the Pine Size Paintings book, and that was something different, uh, coming out with True Tubes, you know. So people see that I'm constantly striving to do something a little bit different, giving back to the industry, you know. Um, and yeah, now I write for you know a few magazines and things like that. So, in essence, you know, being one of the artists to to getting a little bit older and being a part of this industry for so long and giving so much back to it has has definitely I think gained the respect of a lot of the the younger up and coming artists and the people that have been tattooing for a while that have sat back and and seen what I've done and you know the hard work and stuff like that because it shows. You can tell when somebody's working hard and doing it right as opposed to somebody working hard and you know kind of half-ass and things. Everything I try to do, I try to keep in mind the artists, the industry, you know, and, and give them back essentially. So I think with with doing all that has definitely gained a lot of respect for you know for my name and for what I do. It's harder to get to get in with me nowadays just because I have so much going on. I'm, I'm way more, I guess, uh, you know, critical of what tattoos I'm doing. Kind of one of those things like, okay, you have this much time during the day. You know, what do you want to focus on? Do you want to do cover-ups the whole time? Or do you want to fix up other people's tattoos? Or nowadays, I'm, I'm more critical about what I'm doing. I want to do projects that are that are larger, that I can sit with my client for more than a couple hours and really get to know them. And, and, you know, make it into more of a project rather than just an individual tattoo. So, um, yeah, I still do tattoo four days a week. It is harder to get in with me, you know, but I'm still out here doing what I did from day one, and that's, that's tattooing. That's bottom line what's in my heart, what I love doing. Is nothing feels better than, than tattooing. All your stresses, you know, all your everything goes away essentially when you're doing art form. So it's important for me to, ta to continue to tattoo every day, or or nearly every day. Um, so let's go on to the subject about the.